Okay, so I just want to show you a plot. Here I've created a plot, plot, empty cars weight, empty cars miles per gallon, x lab equals weight, y lab equals miles per gallon. Let's go ahead and show it. Sorry, there we go. Okay, there it is. Well, I kind of don't want the code, like most often when you show a plot, you don't want to echo the code. So why don't I put echo equals false and then go ahead and rerun it. That looks much better. There's a bunch of other figure options in Knitter, so you can play around with those, like for example, fig align, probably center. Okay, fig, yeah, we could put a caption, let's say my awesome figure. Okay, and then let's just show you how this looks. Yeah, there's, see there's your your figure caption and so on. So go through some of the options and play around with them. There's, there's uh, options for controlling the height and width of the figure and so on. So last thing I want to talk about is publishing your slides. So as soon as you knit it, when you type knit HTML, it creates a file in your directory. So for example, this slide, or these slides are brianslides.rmd, the file extension standing for R Markdown. Okay, it creates a Brian Slides dot html file so if you click on that it'll bring it up bring up this presentation in a browser not in our studios browser window and in fact you can make it easier just by clicking on open in browser here in the r studio preview window publish will publish it in r pubs which is one of a couple of ways to publish it online the, uh, you know you could also put it in a dropbox um, public folder and just like you can kind of publish web pages in a, in a Dropbox folder um, but you know I think probably my favorite way to publish it is in GitHub so I want to show you a couple of things about GitHub real quick uh, so this these slides I got them uh, well actually I'm sorry the, these slides these temporary slides I'm working on I haven't pushed up to GitHub so why don't we look at the slides for the lecture which are in Sean Cross's GitHub repository I'll, I'll show you this in a second more closely um, but um, this is just an R Markdown file and the associated HTML files pushed up into GitHub. Okay, so let's, let's look at those. Okay, so here is the Developing Data Products course page under, the, under slides in Sean Cross's GitHub repo, repo. So I think I want R Markdown right there. Okay, now here's the R Markdown file. And first thing I want to point out is if you click on this, in GitHub it does a lot of the formatting for you. It recognizes that it's an R Markdown document and it does a lot of formatting ahead for you. It's not going to run the code, of course, but it does a lot of formatting so you can see, you know, what the bullets and the various points are going to look like, okay? Which is nice. So often when I'm reading Sean's, you know, when I'm reading some of Sean's edit, I'll look just at the directly at his R Markdown file. Okay, now let's click on the HTML file. There we go. Now, notice it does not render the HTML file. It is showing you the raw HTML, okay? Now, for the HTML to be rendered, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. In fact, there's a Chrome add-on and a Firefox add-on that will go ahead and do this for you. But Sean's published this via GitHub Pages. And what this means is he has a branch called gh-pages. Um, usually, it requires a no Jekyll file. Um, in the root directory of your GitHub pages, but I noticed he didn't have that, so maybe that isn't necessary. Um, but now if I wanna see it, um, it just means typing a different um, URL, uh, I'm sorry, just mo mildly changing the URL and you can see it. Okay, but, but the important thing is you have to have a branch called gh-pages. That's the most important part. And by the way, it's often, I find it kind of annoying to have a GH pages branch and then a master branch. And I think Sean does too, obviously. So he just deleted the master branch. Okay, so GitHub pages in a sense is his master branch. Okay, so, um, so if we look up here on the address, we have GitHub, GitHub forward slash Sean Cross, which is his username. What I want is Sean Cross dot GitHub io okay so it's username dot github dot io and then slides and then blob and gh pages are just internal things for github so we want to get rid of those and then we want just the path to the html file okay so in in, in sean cross's github repository it's in the in uh, it's in the repo slides the subdirectory developing data products the subdirectory r markdown 
and then the file R markdown.html. And then notice these slides are now hosted on GitHub. And this is an extremely convenient way, especially for most of us that work in data science, because we're, we're usually pushing stuff up and back and forth to GitHub all the time. For me personally, all my course stuff, I just push up to public GitHub repos. All my private researchy stuff, I push up to private GitHub repos, and so on. So this is a very um, clean way to work for those of us that are already working in GitHub. Okay, so for this, after doing this, I would like everyone to try to create a figure in, um, in your presentation. I'd like you to play around with the figure options. I'd like you to try and publish it to GitHub. Uh, read up on GitHub pages if you're having some trouble. Or publish it to RPubs if you want. That's another option. Just click on the Publish button in our studio and see how that works. That, that's fairly self-explanatory. And I would also like you to do, you know, verify that the HTML file gets created into your directory. Click on that and see how you can host it, you know, on your computer and look at it on your computer. So that way, um, you know, you can always visualize it, you know, if you're working on an airplane or something like that. But uh, most important, I think hosting it on GitHub is probably the most technically irritating of all the things I've talked about. So go ahead and try doing that, just so this way you can always publicly host your your repositories in a way that's convenient that probably already fits into your workflow to begin with. Well, that's enough about our markdown, I think, to suit our needs for this class. When you develop your project, you're actually going to create a pitch in our markdown, and you'll hopefully host it on GitHub or something like that, so we can all look at it and see that your project is really awesome. All right, thanks a lot for listening, and we'll see you in the next lecture.